Hell Let Loose is a game made by a small studio with big ideas. This game has caught my attention recently with a bit of buzz in the game's media, so I thought that I'd check it out and bring you guys a look at the potential here. Set in World War II, Hell Let Loose aims to be a realistic platoon based FPS for PC only. It's being made by a studio called Black Matter who are based in Australia but have team members from all over the world including Russia and USA. Right now there is a Kickstarter campaign running which aims to raise a pretty modest amount of 136,000 Australian dollars. As of me recording this video it's actually surpassed that goal and the amount was currently set at 160,000 raised with just over 3 weeks to go. If all goes to plan and the development continues on schedule the game is aiming for a Q2 2018 release. So what is the game exactly and why is it interesting to me? Well Hell Let Loose is a war simulation at its core. This is certainly not an arcade shooter. To start with games are 100 players, 50 per side and the maps are also extremely large at 4 km squared with the battlefield split up into large cap sectors. Each of these sectors when capped grants your team one of three resources which really change how the battle can play out. Infantry reinforcements, fuel depots which can slow down vehicle respawn times and keeping hold of that munitions depot can ensure that your team can utilise artillery bombardment on the enemy team. And the first theatre of war here is actually the Norman town of Saint Marie de Mont on D-Day 1944. Apparently here it's been recreated in one to one scale based on archival reference material and satellite photography. That's a crazy level of detail, something that perhaps we haven't seen in a World War II game yet. Sure, theatres of war and battles have been recreated and acknowledged, but have they potentially been recreated in one to one using satellite photos? Not to my knowledge, please correct me if I'm wrong on that one. So owning certain points not only helps your team win the game overall, but you can also starve them of vital resources, meaning battles become a lot more tactical. Speaking of vehicles, not only are there 100 players on the server, of course, you've also got tanks and artillery to compete with their too. Interestingly I couldn't find anything on planes so unless I've missed that entirely it currently isn't in the game perhaps somewhere down the line maybe they've done that for a balance thing I don't know but it would be a real shame for a World War 2 game not to have the iconic planes of the time. Tanks, transport vehicles, mobile artillery that's all going to be in there but currently no mention of any planes. The game will have 13 roles for players to get stuck into and the infantry roles consist of officer, rifleman, anti-tank, MG, assault, medic, engineer and support. And then you've got two recon roles, the scout and the sniper and two vehicle roles, the tank commander and the crewman. Lastly, you've got the commander. Now the commander will have control of the overall battlefield deciding when and where forces need to be deployed and controlling supplies. The commander will communicate via radio and keep in contact with his platoons on the front line. So the aim of the game here really is to have a command structure. The commander will oversee everything. Officers will put down observation posts and garrisons and soldiers will have the sort of equipment and ammo counts that you would expect to have had back in World War II, meaning that each individual kit has a specific purpose and teams will have to work together to properly take out a tank for instance. Marking the tank with your binoculars and calling in for assistance from your commander. Engineers will be able to create a machine gun nest surrounded by sandbags. In fact officers and engineers will be able to deploy a range of fixed emplacement weapons like the 57mm anti-tank gun, the Pac-40 anti-tank gun and the 155mm howitzer M1. Weapons are also going to be realistic versions of their World War II counterparts. Submachine guns, pistols, sniper rifles, LMGs, if it was in the war then you can expect to see it in this game. Iconic weapons such as the MG42, the Thompson and the Car 98 which was a backbone of the German forces and of course weapon damage is going to be super high and health very low. What you shouldn't expect though is a crosshair because there won't be one in this game. However, weapons will jam and they will overheat and there's suppression too. Oh no. Interested to see how that all blends together in gameplay because while those things do happen in real war, having your gun randomly jam in a video game I think could be quite annoying 
at the same time. So after watching footage of the game and reading through everything that I could find on it, I came to the conclusion that this game reminds me of Squad in a lot of ways. A proper command structure with realistic weapon controls and player movements with the ability to place down forward operating bases and weapon nests. It's got a lot of similarities in that realistic shooter sector. And then in an interesting turn of events I actually did some digging and found out that there is another game aiming to do something similar to Hell Let Loose called Post Scriptum with very similar ideas and game strategy and it's going to be interesting to see how these all fit in. Of course Squad is a modern shooter but Hell Let Loose and Post Scriptum will be similar games in the same setting. Right now of course the game is at a really early phase but the studio is aiming big with this one. When the game releases into early access it will be priced around the 29 US dollar mark and you'll be glad to hear that dedicated servers will be available. According to the game's Kickstarter, Hell Let Loose was a hobby until recently when they realised they needed to head to Kickstarter to finish the product in a reasonable time. That being said, it's not easy to make a game with 100 players and balance all of the weapons, environments and everything else that's required, especially in the time frame that they're looking at and I would say that the dev studio definitely comes under the indie banner here. This is not a AAA completely polished game that we're looking at but there could be a lot of potential. Overall I think from the footage you can tell that the game is in an early stage right now currently pre-alpha so it's got a long way to go to get where it needs to be but I'll be keeping an eye on this one to see how it progresses over the next few months. So there we go guys, let me know your thoughts on Hell Let Loose down in the comments below. Do you like the look of this game? Are you kind of craving for a more realistic World War II shooter? Obviously we've got COD World War II that's aimed at a very different audience, but perhaps this one can scratch your itch if you're into the more immersive, realistic type of gameplay. Cool, as always, thank you so much for watching guys, I really do appreciate your viewership and support. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, if you didn't, a thumbs down. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.